So Mike is going to, we're, we're now on time. Um, and Mike is going to talk to us about MIS lumbar decompression and fusion surgery using the uh, cortical trajectory pedicle screw technique. Th thanks, Ed. Um, um, and I, I guess your comment of now we're back on time means I cannot uh, go over time. So I will get started here. So I'm going to talk about um, another procedure in the minimal access armamentarium, which is a midlift using cortical trajectory screws. And, and just like Richard Asker said, this is not a procedure for everything that's out there, uh, but is good for, I, I think, uh, very specific uh, pathologies. Uh, we all know the benefit of minimally invasive surgery. I, I'm not gonna you know, beat this slide up, but the whole goal is to just to reduce our access trauma, our trauma due to access, but still have the same efficient, effective surgery. Um, we've seen, uh, and we'll hear more during this presentation about our experience in the lumbar spine largely, where there are now a number of minimally invasive techniques that are out there. Um, you know, MIS T-lift may be one of the most common minimally invasive lumbar decompression infusions done. Um, it does result in less tissue damage, but there's still issues related to working through a small tubular retractor to do surgery. Um, I think one of the biggest issues is inadequate decompression working through a tube, especially on the contralateral side with lateral a significant bilateral lateral recess stenosis. Uh, it can result in increased operative time, especially early on in one's uh, experience compared to what you could do open. Uh, and I think it just as Richard Asker just said, there are issues working through a small tube with regards to cages. Um, we often have inadequate fit of a cage. Uh, we may have, so we put in too small of a cage and it doesn't fit right. Uh, you try a big cage and you can injure the nerve root. Uh, and I think the other last issue about MIS T-lift is there has not been as much acceptance among non-MIS surgeons to work from a standard open and then move all the way through a tube. So there's been less uh, acceptance amongst those surgeons. But as we know, we have continued to evolve. Uh, we're going to hear about a significant degree of evolution uh, in minimally invasive surgery today. Uh, and I want to talk about the evolution into the midlift. Um, this is a midline lumbar decompression fusion. It is a continued evolution of our minimal access surgery. So I would say this surgery is more minimal access than minimally invasive, meaning it's not working through a small tubular retractor, yet it's working through a very small midline uh, approach. Uh, and it does utilize and depend on these newer cortical trajectory pedicle screws. But just like Richard Asker said with OLIF, again, we, we keep calling these things new, uh, but they have been around for, uh, for a while. Now, I would say list this as a tweener procedure, uh, and I don't know if this makes sense internationally, but I mean, it's a procedure that I would say utilizes the advantages of an MIS tubular decompression fusion as well as a traditional open. It sits right in the middle or in between, and hence why I call it a tweener procedure. The benefit with this procedure, again, it's minimal access. You can do this through a very small incision. Um, as a surgeon who does open procedures, it's very comfortable. It's a standard midline approach. Every surgeon should be um, comfortable with this. The screw uh, trajectory and placement is different than traditional pedicle screws, but I will tell you it is easier than traditional pedicle screws, uh, especially with um, especially with image guidance. Uh, they're very quick, they're very easy, um, and there are there is some data to suggest that these screws uh, perform better in osteoporotic spine because you're putting them in dense cortical bone as opposed to trabecular bone in a standard open traditional pedicle screw. So um, for the procedure, again, it's, it's a midline incision, somewhere around two and a half centimeters is all you really need. Uh, I usually put a needle in the skin, uh, as you see here, and take a quick x-ray to determine where I want to put the incision. It is imperative, like all of our MIS surgeries, we're putting the, the incision right over our pathology. Uh, and the exposure is different. So if this is the exposure for a traditional open T-lift, for example, we want to expose from the end of the transverse process to the end of the transverse process with a midlift. I really just need to expose from the top of the facet to the top of the facet, okay? So it's a very minimal exposure, just as you would, I think, for a traditional open laminectomy. There are a number of retractors that are out there uh, on the market right now. Here's just an example of one that sit over top of the facet joint that allow you to have a very small access, but be able to do the inner body fusion. And this is just uh, the exposure, all that you need to do this uh, one level fusion. Uh, it's a very small incision. The retractors are in place. Uh, because the screws aim laterally, uh, um, you, you don't need much more to this. And here's just a picture with the, uh, the actually the reference array attached and a drill guide. So you don't need much more than that even to put screws in using image guidance. 
Um, so for this exposure, uh, once you expose, um, you really want to see the lamina, know where the facet joint is, know where the par parsing articularis is. We want to put our, our screws in first. You can do this under fluoroscopy. I'll show some images for that. Uh, I use image guidance, which I think makes it a lot easier. So the key part is where do I put my screws? So it's essentially at the starting point is essentially um, at the midpoint of the pars and articularis. And you can define that by finding the superior lateral edge of the pars and articularis and move approximately three to five millimeters uh, medial. There's often a small bony ridge there uh, that allows one to, uh, to put the screw in. Some pearls for this. Um, I do prepare my screw paths before the laminectomy. I screw, I put the screw or I drill the hole, I tap it. Um, because the screws are medial, they'll get in the way of your decompression. So um, I essentially uh, put the holes in first, but not the screws. You want to be careful not to create too large of an entrance hole. Uh, remember, the screw relies on the purchase in the cortical bone and even the entry cortical bone of the, of the pars. So don't create a large hole in the bone where you're going to put this. Um, once we have our starting point, we're essentially going to aim about 10 to 15 degrees lateral, bisect the pedicle, and head up into the lateral dense cortical bone. Um, and here we can see our starting holes on, on fluoroscopy. So some pearls here is we already picked our starting point on an AP image. Um, and really the starting point is if you're right in the mid pars and on fluoro, you essentially want to be right at the level, the inferior level of the transverse process. That's the starting point on fluoro. At the upper instrumented vertebrae, you can actually start a little bit lower to try to miss that upper facet joint. And then you're going to aim 10 to 15 degrees lateral. And I will tell you that for most patients, that trajectory is if you take your drill at the starting point, lean it up against the, the, the spinous process and drill, that is almost always the correct medial lateral trajectory for the cortical trajectory screw. And then on lateral fluoro, you want to aim up towards the upper end plate, not violating it, but get as close as you can to that. And you want to be in about the posterior one fourth of the vertebral body. For me and my hands, that's almost always a 35 millimeter screw is, is, the, is the typical length that I'll put in there. Sometimes at L5, I'll put a 40 millimeter screw. The pearls here, we want to drill our hole. We're going to tap the hole to the same diameter and the depth of the screw. I typically put a 50 millimeter by 35 millimeter screw. So I use a 50 tap and I tap to 35 millimeters. I'm going to do all that first place the hemostatic agent, and then do my laminectomy. And this is what it would look like. This is the trajectory. It's an up and out trajectory. And I want my screw to be sitting right in that dense cortical bone. And that's perhaps why this could behave better in osteoporotic spine. I use image guidance for this. As I mentioned, I've moved away from fluoro. I think it's much easier if you have this in your hospital to do this. Um, once I have my exposure, I use a drill and a drill guide and drill to 35 millimeters. Again, I do not need any bigger incision for this. This can sit right on the spinous process, right in the middle of your wound. Uh, and again, under image guidance, I can just aim up and out in that dense cortical bone, drill my hole, tap, and I can put in four holes and four screws probably in less than five minutes uh, through that small incision. Um, here's just showing the proper trajectory using uh, image guidance to put the uh, screws in. Once I've drilled the hole, again, I'm feeling it here with a, a pedicle sound. I have my tap ready to go. I'm gonna tap all the way to depth. Um, and then I'm going to perform a, a standard laminectomy and facetectomy just as I would in any type of T-lift, but I'm just doing it in through a much smaller incision. Once I have my uh, decompression done, here's the dura, both the sets are off. I'm going to put my contralateral screws in, in a rod. I can use that to help distract. Um, once the rod is, is being put in here, if I have uh, a distractor in the disc space, I can put some extra distraction on the screws plus the disc space to open up the disc space. Uh, and once that's open, then I can take my cage uh, and then place the cage uh, into the inner body space here um, and then place my contralateral screws and then place compression. And this is what uh, your screw should look like, uh, aiming up and out and aiming up towards the upper end plates um, in the lateral view. Um, the biomechanics of these screws have been uh, studied uh, fairly extensively. Here's a, a study out of Neil Crawford, which essentially, in summary here, these screws behaved uh, almost the same as traditional pedicle screws uh, in this cadaveric specimen. So they are sound biomechanically. There now have been a number of clinical studies out there. I just chose uh, two. Um, this is a study of 39 patients. It was comparative, uh, 39 pedicle screw, 40 cortical screws. Uh, when they looked at fusion rates at six and 12 months, no difference, really no difference in outcome, BAS or ODI in 12 months. The improvement with the cortical screws was in the perioperative uh, uh, standpoint with operative time, incision length, et cetera. So the conclusion was a good alternative to tradi traditional pedicle screws. Here's one additional study out to two-year follow-up. 
79 patients with screws, uh, looking at traditional to cortical, no difference in outcome with back pain, ODI, leg pain, the SF12 uh, as well out to two years. The only benefit seen here really was in the perioperative period, benefiting cortical um, screws and no difference at fusion rate. So showing that these are good sound uh, techniques uh, in these patients. So uh, in, a, in a standard degenerative case, maybe improved perioperative outcomes, but the failure rate, the non-union rate, no difference in equivalent long-term outcomes to tradi traditional pedicle screws. In my hands, I largely use this for st spondy and stenosis. Uh, again, with that I wanna get a good central decompression, grade one or grade two. If it's highly mobile, I'd probably use a traditional T-lift. And as I showed in that image guidance, you can use it in revisions. And here's just my last couple slides. Just here's a patient with a grade one spondy and stenosis, fairly high ODI, fairly significant back pain. This is neurogenic claudication. Uh, here's a patient I treated with a midlift operation. And here's the patient out at one year fused, significant improvement in the ODI and leg pain. Thank you very much for your attention.